centuries, mankind has been fascinated with realms outside of our conscious awareness. Through a series of interviews with practitioners, guest speakers, and experts, Liberate the podcast covers all that and more, from health and holistic healing to the supernatural. We aim to educate, motivate, inspire, and liberate your consciousness. Hi, and welcome to another episode of Liberate the Podcast. Uh, Today we're going to have an amazing guest that's going to be at Liberate Hollywood not once, but two times over the next couple months. Uh, She is a a past life uh, specialist. She travels the world speaking about it. She's been uh, talked about by Wayne Dyer and Brian Weiss on Oprah.com. And she also does EFT, which we're going to talk a little bit about that. And we're going to talk a little bit about the past life regression. Um, It's a fascinating subject that I think a lot of people are getting more and more curious about. At least I see it with people coming into the center or at Liberate Emporium, more people uh, having inquiries, wondering what is this whole thing about past lives and how can we understand them better and how can we access them? So I'm really honored to have Mira Kelly with us today. So Mira, say hello to the audience and uh, I would love to hear a little bit about yourself. Hello and thank you so much for having me. I love that we are talking about past life regression. I love that you are going to be hosting me over the next couple of months. I'm thrilled to meet uh, your tribe in person. So uh, I know this is going to be a fun uh, conversation both for you and I and for everybody listening. Awesome. I'm, I'm excited. And uh, being a hypnotherapist, you know, I, I, I understand that realm. I don't do as much past life regression work. So I'm always fascinated to learn from people that do it regularly and everything that has come up for you. Um, yeah, I mean, maybe we should start with that. You, you've authored this amazing book called Beyond Past Lives, and we've, we have that available at our store. Um, and one of our... Um, the, the, our main event director has actually went in and experienced your class in New York. So, and she had a phenomenal experience and uh, she's a very picky person when it comes to uh, the impact that teachers and facilitators uh, have. And so, I mean, to have that type of testimony from Rebecca over at uh, Liberate is, just speaks volumes for you, for you and about you. Most definitely, I'm very grateful. Just so that we introduce our, uh, our, our the people who are with us uh, today uh, uh, on the topic of past life regression. So past life regression is a way for us to connect with other lifetimes we have lived. And um, in my teachings, I talk about uh, those other lifetimes as happening simultaneously. Hence the clever title of my book, Beyond Past Lives, right? We are going beyond the idea of linear time and we're really tapping into the concept of time being parallel, a time being simultaneous. And we're moving from a 3D reality uh, understanding to a 5D reality uh, creation. So, and, and past life regression, even though it has this funny old fashioned name, past life regression, it really fits into it uh, very well, meaning reality creation. And so regression is a beautiful way that we get to connect with other lifetimes we are living there and Folding simultaneously, and we get to understand the big picture of our soul, the the path and the journey we are on. We get to understand uh, the bigger vision of why the emotional challenges, why uh, the, uh, the the sense of karmic connections with certain people, why the difficulties with money, and uh, obviously, of course, the physical conditions. Right? How do they relate to other lifetimes? What is the lesson behind? And so what I love so much about past life regression is it's a modality, a tool that allows us to go to the core of the issue. And it's not a a one way approach, much like, uh, you know, going to the doctor and getting a set of pills and these pills are for this. What I love about past life regression is that it's a tool that allows us to explore everything that we have going on in our lives. And here's what happens with people. At first, they come to me and they say, okay, I've got these problems, let's work on them. And then gradually becomes a tool of exploration of consciousness. Because, you know, uh, we get to learn about 
the other other planets, other existences, other dimensions. We get to tap into the stream of all that is. We get to explore how how reality is created. We get to explore so much more. So it really becomes a, a fun, fun way of uh, of connecting and enjoying. You know what that reminds me of? It's like for those that are listening that if this is a new concept for you um, in some of this kind of blowing your mind open of these alternate lifetimes happening at the same lifetime it reminds me of that tv show that was like in the 90s called sliders does anybody remember that do you, do you remember that it was like and you would slide back and forth to these different lifetimes it was on a major network whether it's abc or nbc or cbs or something like that but it would be these people would slide into their other existences and um but anyway, so that that's kind of what it's reminded me of. But I love the fact that you're you're saying these like parallel lives and these experiences that are going on. But I would love to kind of backtrack a little bit and say, well, how did you even get into this? You know, mm, thank you for asking. Right? Uh, who am I to be talking no, about no, this? No, no, it's no, it's not about who are you to be talking about this. It's like you know, that's diving down the rabbit hole to such such depths. I'm just curious about your story you know and when did you start studying all of this and diving in and what happened that kind of sparked that in you Mm. So I learned about past life regression years ago when I was a kid and I had literally, uh, I was a teenager and I had a very interesting and profound experience uh, that helped me understand what is my purpose. And imagine, right, at 13 years old learning what's your purpose in this life, what a blessing. Um, Given that every day I see people and the biggest question we all ask, the predominant question everybody asks is, what is my purpose and uh, then um and then uh you know life kept on going for me and then i was faced uh, with a very painful physical condition that i wasn't able to heal through the traditional road that was being offered by my healthcare practitioner so i had a tmj that was severe the inflammation in my jaw was really severe and i was told that um everything that we were doing was not helping so i had to uh have an operation and the operation was a crap they didn't you know it was not a guarantee it was more of we just don't know what else to do so let's let's uh, break your jaw and reattach it back with wires and so, that sounds great right exactly so it didn't feel like a, a possible solution for me at all and so I um, I remembered you know when you're desperate how all of a sudden it's as if you're more willing to listen and to surrender and uh, and so um, I, I remembered doing a past life regression when I was a kid and and I said to myself you know what I've got nothing to lose let me give this a try and I was able to connect with uh, somebody who guided me through past life regression experience because you know this was important for me I wanted I wanted the individual attention I really wanted this to work and and so I experienced a lifetime where I saw myself as a slave and as the slave, I had this big metal collar right here around my neck. And uh, and this metal collar was hurting when it was put together. It was hurting right where the main pain spot was um, in, in, in my jaw as who I am in this lifetime as Mira. And it was really, you know, it was really a very profoundly emotionally stirring experience. It really helped me um, understand why the emotions, uh, uh, what are the emotions that have caused about the physical pain. And um, the beauty of this is that I was able able to wake up the next morning and the pain was completely gone wow. and then of course up, of course it was up to me to apply this new learning and this new way of being and to become the new me right this is something very important for us to talk about because I don't want people to think of past life regression as um 
<clears throat> as a way of just, you know, getting a miracle healing. And, yeah. and that's it, because it's all about the inner work, right? I would not have gotten the condition if I haven't done something about it, right? Mm -hmm. If you will. So I had to do the inner work to create an inner environment of, of balance. And so so the regression allowed me to see what that is. And then I was able to to put in the uh, the effort and the understanding. But the beauty of it was that I, I was immediately healed and that's something that I see with my clients every day right they come out of their regression and they say I am done with this condition now I understand now my mind can apply the lessons in everyday life and so um and so um Eventually, over time, I was able to move away from what I was doing, which was being an attorney, and move into this this practice and doing this with people, uh, 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 you know, every day. And and the blessing of being able to to serve uh, people and see them change in front of my very eyes is truly amazing. That is amazing, and I mean, I just I want people to really get that having this regression you didn't need the surgery you ended up oh uh, yeah oh, absolutely and you ended up healing but you, you really stress on a good point that it's about what did you learn from it and what work are you going to do because otherwise you see this happen in maybe other incidences where you know especially like in the world of addiction or whatnot where somebody just passes the addiction and they might become sober off of that substance but then they have become addicted to like working out or they become addicted to this or that so if you don't learn the lesson then maybe the jaw pain would come back again or whatnot it gave you the ability to see it to experience what the reasons were and say i don't need to continue to suffer this way that's it. It was so well said. And and you gave the example of an addiction, of being addicted to one substance or another. Or another example is physical conditions, right? A person may have a jaw condition that they don't heat. You, you know, they physically heal through regression, right? I help them with that. But then they go back to the same old ways of thinking and feeling, thinking and feeling, and that causes the the, the uh, uh, DNA in the body to respond, the tissue to respond, and lo and behold, they develop a thyroid condition, right? Yeah. Just because it's the same issue that was not addressed in terms of thinking and feeling. And so uh, that's, that's what I see, uh, you know, our work with, ex exploration through past life regression healing and then the continuous effort in being this person becoming this person who is on this path of being their greater self yeah beautifully said what about some other examples of people that you've worked with i mean this is just so fascinating that somebody can go in and they can have this um you know, experience of being teleported literally. And I mean, I, I guess we should tell people, or at least I would presume there's different ways of past life regression, but you have somebody kind of go back and re-experience that, right? And so they're seeing and, and having that awareness. Is that the Absolutely. Type? Yeah. It's, it's a meditative state of just focus, being focused within. So the person is in a relaxed state and I guide them uh, into other lifetimes. And I can think of two examples to share with you right now so um, I had an experience where a, a husband and a wife flew in to work with me and the first uh, the first one who went was at the husband and so he came in and he said to me about 20 years ago when I was in college I was uh, on the uh, Olympics team and I was getting ready uh, you know he was in training for for the Olympics and um, and out of the blue, all of a sudden, he developed severe digestion issues where to the point where he was very limited in the number of foods he can eat. He was really restricted and he really had to, and he was in so much pain, he was suffering so badly that not only he had to drop off the, the uh, Olympics team, but he had to drop off college in order to you know, restore back his health. And so, you know, he was able to patch things back together. Uh, but the limitation in his life didn't go away right things didn't get healed he was just kind of able to keep living uh, with this disability and um and so uh he experienced a lifetime 
where he saw himself as a bullfighter who was in the middle of this big arena and it was a warm sunny day and imagine the crowd cheering and roaring and he was right there in the center of it and and there was this bull that charged straight towards him and in a matter of seconds he didn't move fast enough out of the bull's way and so with the horn the bull just ripped right through his guts and the guts spilled right there in the dust you know and imagine and slow motion he's describing all of this to me the experience of what that feels like and the pain and 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 the association with the roaring crowd right and so somehow um, he connected uh when he was training for the olympics somehow he connected the experience of it's not safe to be seen it's mm-hmm. not safe to be the center of attention and uh, and so um and so he developed the, the digestive issues, right? Uh, j- just like in that other lifetime, he experienced uh, the, bull, um, the bull hurting him. And so he left my office and he was so excited. He said to me, I'm, I'm going to go have a burger. And burgers have been off limits for him for a very long time, right? And so he was super excited. He was like, I'm done with this. I'm healed. I understand this. I'm always safe. I'm always protected. It's safe to be seen. I'm on my way. And so the next day comes his wife and she shows up and she says to me, what did you do to my husband? And and, and I said to her, why? And she said, not only did he have burger for lunch, but then him and I went to have pasta for dinner. We never have had a pasta as a family together right so so it was this moment of uh, understanding and instant healing and 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 the openness of now I get it now I see the big picture and so that's an example of a physical condition that was affected through pr- past life regression N- now let me share with you the story okay. of this woman who um uh, I worked with. Uh, she called in from Uruguay. So I'm I'm really blessed that my book is published in 18 languages all over the world, and I get to work with people literally from all over the world. And so this beautiful woman had just lost her baby. Um, uh, the baby was really very 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 young. I believe it was eight or nine months old, and um, she had a younger daughter about six or seven years old, and. And in this process of mourning the loss of the baby, um, and you know the questions of why is this happening to us, uh, there was also a severe st- strain happening in the relationship with her husband, mm-hmm. to the point where once the baby passed away, no more than a week or two after it, he said, "We need to get a divorce." He literally walked on on his wife and his child. So she's in a place where it feels like her whole life is falling apart, right? Yeah. And um, and so she experienced a lifetime where she um, was married to the very same man and uh, they were in the Middle East and she was pregnant with their child and she wasn't able to deliver the child. She, She gave birth to a stillborn child. And he was so devastated and his devastation in this other lifetime, he didn't know how to communicate his pain with her. She mm-hmm. didn't know how to communicate either. So there were two people who were so hurting that just didn't know how to find their way back to each other. And in that lifetime, she... Um, later was able to get pregnant with a second child and uh, and you know the husband took uh, another few wives so she lost uh, she lost uh, she had a sense of losing his love and because she lost his love and because she lost their first child she really left uh, the uh, lived the rest of her life with this feeling of it's not even worth living my life anymore. You know, I'm just waiting for the last day of my life. I've lost the love that I had. I lost everything that I wanted. And so the lesson in that second, in that Middle Eastern lifetime that she was given was, you know what, you had another son. You could have, you could have focused on the love that was available there. Instead, you chose to focus on where love was not possible to come through and Mm. say, this is the only way love can come through. And, um, and so there's really, you know, no, room for healing of the heart you just chose to close your heart and so and so she was told focus on your little daughter in this life let him be let him do whatever he needs to do focus on living life and and focus on the friends focus on the family do not hold on to the feeling of I'm alone I'm betrayed nothing is working out for me right I'm out of love and then the beauty of what happened with her is that she connected with the spirit of her passed away child 
and it was a it was a girl and so um the girl said to her you know i i i'm your spirit guide i came into this life to basically give you a nudge because you weren't learning your lessons you really mm. needed this drama to unfold and for everything to fall apart so that your heart can crack open and you can start really learning and paying attention and being on this journey and so she she received such a beautiful understanding of it was all it was all planned it was all good nothing was an accident so in other words she was really given an understanding of the bigger picture and how to live her life forward and and it gave her such a tremendous sense of peace between her and her husband so so these are the kinds of miracles i get to witness every day and and you know these are just two of the millions of stories I can come up with yeah. to share with you. But that's the kind of transformation that is available through past life regression, just really deep, uh, soulful learning and, and, and change. Yeah, it seems like the people learn that there is no bad and that they can make good out of any situation. And when they mm. really allow themselves to uh, see what is there to take away, and you know, a lot of times people in and in, in the in their their physical existence in this lifetime, maybe the issues are too close or too whatever. But in a distant, in a past life or simultaneous life, you know, um, they can look at it and have that level of detachment to say, like, how did this serve me? What did this teach me? You know, yeah, almost as like this perspective of another, and then they can integrate that with such divine wisdom that allows for their mind, their life and stuff to take fold and say, Oh, okay, I get it. You know, I love that. Well, well said. I love it. Yes. Yeah. Very true. That's beautiful. Um, what, it, you know, and so how long have you been doing past life regressions for people? Oh my God. Honestly, it feels like forever. It's, it's been a long, long time. It's, it's and been lifetimes, right? <laughs> yes, but, but truly it feels like lifetimes. I do not even remember my old life as an attorney. Honestly, it feels like who was that person? <laughs> yeah. Wow. And your first experience was when you were 13 and you, yeah, and, and I want to bring back, if you don't mind sharing, you said that you got your purpose for your life when you were 13 during that mm. past life regression, but you didn't share what it was. What, what is that? <laughs> um, you know, I, the, 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 thank you for asking. Nobody has ever gone, gone uh, uh, to that question being like, well, so what is it? And, uh, it's truly, uh, the idea of help, um, helping people um, empower them really empower them through through love and through understanding and and teaching people that they don't have to suffer teaching people that uh, they are the masters of their of their ship if you will right by focusing and and understanding the bigger picture of our lives and then focusing that lesson and and applying our thoughts and our emotions we get to truly direct life and and learn how to handle energy and so uh, because of my experience of moving away from being an attorney and doing the work that I'm so passionate about and I love so much, people often come to me and say to me, so how did you do it? What is my purpose? What do I do? And, you know, each one of us has a different specific focus in terms mm -hmm. of what is our purpose. And for each one of us, our gifts and talents are always uh, the, the the signposts that lead us in that direction, right? Uh, but also all of us have a joint purpose, if you will. Each one of us is here on earth in order to learn how to handle mental energy, how to handle mental creative energy. And mental energy is nothing other than thoughts and our emotions, which blended together create expectation. So we really really here to learn how to be gods in the physical, how to trans translate um, uh, possibilities and potentials into physical reality and experiences by by focusing our thoughts and our emotions. And so and so that that's a very long winded way of me to describing to you what 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 I experienced and know of to be my purpose. But once you become clear of it it's such a it's such a great uh, sense of um freedom freedom to be yourself and that's why I, I i love when people ask me this question what is my purpose let's let's discover it yeah 
And, and, I, and I can imagine that as an attorney and as a past life regressionist, you were living that purpose, one from more of a paternal aspect of, you know, teaching people to stand up for their self or their rights or whatnot. You know, I'm not sure what kind of law you were practicing. And one now from that maternal of healing their emotions and allowing them to see that everything is is beautiful in, in its divinity. Um, oh, how well said. Thank you. Yeah. I, and... You know, I think that's important to note because there's so many different ways that a purpose can manifest within one's life and in the way that we can live it and be it and express it. Um, you know, so it's beautiful. And that essence of finding freedom, freedom to be oneself, which brings me into another um, amazing uh, technique and skill set of yours is utilizing the emotional freedom technique, uh, which people might know of as tapping. It's where you know, you're kind of like beep, 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 beep. And uh, um, so when did you start practicing that and what got you into uh, discovering the power of EFT and uh, becoming, you know, a practitioner and facilitating groups and transformational work with that. I really love EFT. It's such a beautiful tool that allows people to easily shift their energy and their emotions right there on the spot. And we truly need that. Uh, each one of us needs to have this technique or any other energy changing technique uh, right there at our disposal. And uh, because uh, when you think about it, energy is truly what we're made of. And just like Einstein says, um, uh, there's really no matter. It's just a, a energy being slowed down to a frequency that we can perceive through our senses. And this dovetails and ties into what we were saying earlier that our purpose here is to learn how to handle mental creative energy, right? Mm -hmm. So being able to constantly adjust where we are emotionally and what we think and what we believe and what we expect is really how we get to truly direct uh, direct and, and be in charge of this energy. And I really love this example. So think of airplanes. When you travel on airplanes, and if you were to look at the interactive maps on the screen, or if you were to open up a magazine and see the course that your plane is going to take on a, on a map, you will notice that they always fly in a curve. They never mm. fly planes, never fly in a straight line. And so what happens with planes in order for them to get from point A to a point B when their trajectory is actually a curvy one, uh, they, what they have to do is they have to constantly adjust during the duration of the flight their, their trajectory. So planes adjust the course of their flight about 95% of the time and still they get where they're supposed to get to and that's us. I love this analogy because that's really us. Even if it seems like I'm having an off day, even if it seems like I'll never get there, even if it seems like, oh my God, how am I ever going to you know, do this? I feel all this resistance. I feel all these blocks. What about this belief? What about this messy emotion? As long as we keep on adjusting, we'll get where we need to go and we'll be able to create the experiences we're looking to create. And so tapping is a beautiful technique that helps people uh, uh, get do that and I learned tapping very long time ago truly truly forever ago just as it was becoming a known and coming coming out as a as a as a technique and I've been always using it on my own and then there came a moment when people who were working with me and, uh, you know, I have beautiful stories uh, to share how uh, how practical and how impactful tapping is and healing things in the moment. And then there came a moment when all my clients started saying to me, Mira, I am experiencing extraordinary things um, in my sessions. I'm really loving what I'm learning. But now, you know, I got to go back to real life. I And I need help in making sure I stay on the path and that I don't slip in old ways of being. So can can I keep on coaching with you? And so, and so that question brought up the answer of, of course, I even know how to do it, right? Because I, yeah. I use tapping all the time. And so, um, so the the class that you will be doing with you guys is really beautiful because it's focused on using tapping and shifting emotions into manifesting miracles, into creating the experiences we're looking to uh, to have the uh, the heart's desires we're all looking to manifest 
manifest. And so the class will be focused on releasing resistance and magnetizing to us what it, what it is that we're looking to uh, manifest. So I'm very excited for that. That's amazing. I'm going to be there <laughs> for sure. We'll um, have fun. I and so it's a, it's a technique for those that don't know. It's a technique that involves, um, you know, really tapping different parts of your face and your body or whatnot to shift energy in a fast way and to shift your emotional state. Um, yeah, and, 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 and so this became like a tool that you would give people so they could take home with them so they could continue mm-hmm. to like almost have you in their back pocket on any day. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. And uh, what I love about tapping is that it combines um, ancient Chinese practices that uh, are the study of movement of energy through the channels of energy in the body called meridians. And on these meridians, there are certain points. And in the traditional acupuncture way of tree, uh, the body system, uh, they use needles. We don't use needles in tapping. We simply use our fingertips to move the energy physically through the body. And so as we move the energy, we're also giving a signal to the uh, nervous system and to the brain saying, even though I'm experiencing emotions that don't feel good and I just want to run away and get a pint of ice cream or stuff my face with chips because that's how I usually handle my, you know, when I get to this place where things don't feel good I'm right here and I'm processing through everything and I'm mm-hmm. safe so it really looks it works as a way of soothing the nervous system and saying uh, and and the uh, amygdala and that part of the brain that uh, stimulates the fight or flight response uh, in us and it serves to say it's okay I'm safe even though I'm experiencing these things and as as we move the energy the the intensity subsides and the person is in a place of openness and saying okay now now I can seek bigger potentials and the third thing that tapping does is it literally reprograms the subconscious. It works to hypnotize us out of beliefs and stories that we don't mm-hmm. longer want to carry in. We don't want to uh, keep on dragging behind us as old luggage and, and hypnotize us into new beliefs, new stories, new expanded ways of being. Wow. Can you share some uh, amazing transformational stories that have happened with people using it at, at like one or two experiences only, you know, like the, the, the differences in their emotional or their abundance or whatever it may be? It, it really is instant, truly instant, the, the, the shift in the energy and the possibilities people see. Um, um, some time ago, I was able to impact and improve my vision using tapping. I, um, I uh, have taught a class on using tapping for uh, creating uh, prosperity. And the level of openness and, and possibilities that were born into people were just truly astounding. Um, I can think of a story where uh, when Christmas morning, my little niece, who was four years old at that time, woke up with a fever fever and throwing up and imagine Christmas morning where do you go find the doctor right and so everybody was fretting Um, they were trying to give her medicine but you know she would throw it up and you you imagine it was a panic in the house and it's the time when you're supposed to feel most excited and most thrilled to open presents and so while everybody was fretting and trying to decide what to do I simply sat her on my lap and because you know she's four years old she cannot even repeat after Mm -hmm. me and that's what we do in tapping I tell people what to say and they repeat after me so so I was tapping on her little face with one finger and I was speaking for her and uh, and I uh, all I kept on saying to her was that she's loved and that she is safe and and at some point I said something about her mommy loving her and her mommy being safe and her whole face changed and all these emotions came up and at that time my sister was pregnant with my second niece with her second baby and my sister had severe morning sickness so she and uh, for her morning sickness meant all day sickness right yeah. so she was she would be dragging around the house she'll be some pretty much you know laying on the couch lifeless and and for my little niece who was four years old who couldn't put it together yeah. she she thought that mommy not going to be okay and she felt scared and when I realized that this is what's going on with this little person I kept on going in the direction of it's okay everything is okay and she believed me right she truly felt her emotions addressed the energy moved 
And um, within half an hour, the fever was gone, and we were sitting in front of the Christmas tree opening presents. So that's kind of wow. the immediate <laughs> energy shift uh, that happens in the body with, in terms of our emotions, our energy, and our stories. And now with her it was immediate and sometimes it takes a little more work but no matter i love that we have this tool so that there's things we can do beautiful uh i'm sure that everybody that's listening is extremely excited about hopefully getting to meet you in person mm. or to learn more i know that they can definitely find you on mirakelly.com um and you know, we're going to be doing these two workshops, you know, one the last Wednesday of February, that's the, um, that's the EFT one, right? And uh, then we have, and that is, just because I got to look at my dates here, on February 28th um, from 8 to 10. And then on March 3rd is going to be a very amazing one because that's when you're going to do the past life regression intensive. Now, what happens in that intensive? Oh, it's going to be a truly amazing uh, day. So we're going to spend the whole uh, spend the whole day together, and we are going to dive into nature of reality and really solving the challenges and finding the solutions and the healings that each one of you needs. And so we'll go into past lives. We under we'll understand the patterns. We'll see the big picture. We'll go into future lives. Uh, we'll we'll focus on um, really getting catching a glimpse of your. future future life and, you know, uh, the possible future of your present life. Um, it, it's a very highly experiential workshop, uh, which which is focused uh, in those who come really diving in and, um, and getting real answers, getting real help right then and there. And um, I, I know it's going to be an amazing, amazing event. Um, because I, that's, you know, that's the kind of event that Rebecca came to yes. that you were talking about at the beginning of the of our conversation. And uh, also uh, we'll, we'll conclude the event with uh, doing a very powerful meditation to manifest your best life yet, right? Bring it all together in this present moment. Everything that we learn, everything that we heal and release in this present moment, so that so that the person walks into back into their life as a new consciousness, new awareness, new tools, and new understanding of how to do it all. Ah, beautiful, and I mean, who wouldn't want that, right? To have healing, transformation, and the power to create what you really want. And, right? and, you know, for the EFT one, the tools and techniques to continue to put in your back pocket day and day and time and time again to transform. Ah, I'm looking forward to having you. I'm looking forward to meeting you in person, too. Uh, if you had to give one bit of advice or uh, some words of wisdom to those that are listening, what would you leave everybody with today? <laughs> I, 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 the thought came of my dad. He always used to say to me, this too shall pass. In other words, whatever it is that you're working through right now, please know that there's hope, there's way to heal things, there's change. Nothing is permanent. The only permanent thing in life is change. It's mm -hmm. it's it's a beautiful um, uh, a sh little short quote from uh, 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 ancient Greek philosopher, change is the only constant. So trust me, just keep going, reach out to me, come to our workshops, and I'm here to tell you it is possible to heal all, all that you're going through there is an answer there is a solution and uh, and two years from now when you look back on your life you'll say oh that was an issue <laughs> yeah because hopefully you look back two years from now and say i'm yeah. so grateful that happened because that taught me this this and that right? absolutely and i'm so beyond that now that oh really <laughs> yeah <laughs> yes. oh what a pleasure Aww. Thank you so much for having me. I really loved our conversation. Thank you. Thank you for being and allowing us to uh, and join us today. And, you know, I'm, I'm really grateful. I'm looking forward to seeing you in Feb at the end of the February. Have a good I one. I look forward to it. Okay. <laughs> Bye for now. Bye.